hard to figure out, you know, every year to how to approach that ocean in that particular year's way. So uh, we'll do the best we can right now to at least begin to be makasha ourselves a little bit to the light of Pesach. And uh, as usual, you know, we're going to try to go from a particular point, try to hop a particular point of Pesach, and from there maybe to get a more a broader view of what's going on in the Yantif, at least uh, in a way that we can be makasha ourselves. So let's let's begin like this. We know that one of the, uh, you know, in the Seder night, so there's many things that we eat, drink, Ikrin Yon and Pesach, Matzah, Mar, Dalakaisis, the Haggadah itself, Karpas, Yachatz, all the different Simonim. But there's one Indian of the Seder night that sort of is, uh, it goes by a little bit, very, you know, somewhat unnoticed. And, uh, but that's exactly what we're going to be focusing on tonight to sort of target and, and hone in on this, this uh, forgotten element. I say forgotten, but uh, a little bit lesser focused on element of the Seder night. But from there, to define what Pesach is a little bit. And that's the Charaisis, right? So we know that the mitzvah is to eat mar, right? So you say bracha, shereki shalom, zvon al chilas mar, and you dip it into charoises as well. So let's investigate in halacha for a couple minutes the Indian of charoises, and then again, like I said, from there we'll see the panemius of where that takes us regarding the yantif of Pesach b'chol. So it's like this: it begins with a mishnah, okay? In Marmaka number one, it's a mishnah b'saches b'sachim kuf yadal ramadal. So the mishnah tells us. That one of the basic reasons why we have charaisis, why we charaisis, as we know, is because mar is very, very sharp. And it can even be, um, you know, unhealthy, the sharpness. So the Mishnah says that you dip the mar into the charaisis to soften the blow of the charaisis. So the Mishnah says, Sh'ein charaisis mitzvah. That's the first opinion of the Mishnah, which is that there's no mitzvah. It's not like charaisis is its own Indian. It's not an Indian by itself. It's just uh, to take off the difficulty, the, the strength of the mar a little bit. That's the first opinion. However, ben Tzadik in the Mishnah tells us that that's true. Charis certainly does help alleviate some of the heaviness of the mar, and that's certainly a component of it. But Rav ben Tzadik says mitzvah. But however, it, it is as mitzvah by itself. It does have its own kiyam. You don't make a bracha, but there's a mitzvah to it. There's something there. By itself, it has its own aspect of the Seder. So that's what the Mishnah says, but Rabbi Lazar ben Tzadik in the Mishnah doesn't explain exactly what the Indian is. So in Maramokah number two, the Gemara and Psachim over there, also on Kuf Yudal and Aleph, asks the question, my mitzvah, so what's the Indian of Charesis then? So the Gemara gives two answers. Rabbi Levi Oimer, Rabbi Levi said, Zechir Tapuach, besides Charesis being there to alleviate, to cut the sharpness of the Mar, it also by itself stands out as a Zechir to Tapuach, which we translate as an apple, the apple tree. What does that mean? So, as Rashi and Mepharshim explain, is that this is, what the Pasuk tells us that Chazal, based on Psokim and Shir Shirim, tell us that we know that when Pari was making his decrees against the Jewish people, against the baby boys, so the Jewish women tried to give birth and, you know, in private ways, in ways that were not, you know, sort of under the radar, uh, they wouldn't be officially part of any census or anything like that. So Chazal say that the women would go out to the orchards and give birth under the Tapuach tree. And so says Rabbi Levi, the Indian of Charoises, which contains within it fruits, is going to be a zecher to the fruit trees that the Jewish mothers would give birth under them. So it's a zecher to that Indian of the 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 Yanu, I said, Ken Yibar Bechen Yifritz, of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Zecher Latapuach. Rabbi Yechonon Omer, Rabbi Yechonon says differently, zecher Latit, that it's a remembrance, it's a memory of the tit, of the of the brick and mortars that the Jewish people slaved in, in Mitzrayim. Amr Abaya, so those are the two opinions. Abaya says, Hilkach, because these are the two sides of the mitzvah Chareses, Hilkach tzarech lekehuye, v'tzarech lesemuche. Therefore, in the Chareses, it has to be something like acidic, something like from a fruit, corresponding to the reason of Zeich Tepuach, and it also has to be thick, corresponding to the reason of Zeich Tit. That's what Abaya says. Lekehuye has to be sharp, it has to be uh, acidic, Zeich Tepuach. Tzarech l'smuchin has to be thick. Zeich l'tit. That's the uh, that's the thing. By the way, the mafreshim deal with this. That tapuach, when Abaya says because of that reason, zeich l'tapuach, it has to be acidic. It's a little bit funny because an apple is not necessarily an acidic fruit. 
So Taisus and the many Rishonim say that the word tapuach in Chazal doesn't mean apple. It's not really the way tapuach that we think of. It's actually a citrus, an esrog maybe, or just a citrusy fruit. That's really what tapuach is. So I would change like tapuach into bedvash is uh, more of like an orange on it or something like that. But uh, I mean, again, the way we had the, the word tapuach is an apple, but in Chazal it's not really an apple. Anyway, so that's the, that's the good one. Okay. So a couple of, a couple of points. First of all. If we're trying to, ha- again, one question I guess you can think of is what exactly did these two reasons have to do with each other? In other words, in the Gemara, simply, it's machlekes, okay? So Reb Levi says, charesis is zeich tapuach, as a, a zeicher for the uh, pruravu of the Jewish people, or hatzlacha in growing the houses of the Jewish people, the base Yisrael, and then you have Rabbi Yechanan, that's zeich latit. Okay, it's machlekes. But we know that in Pneumius, everything is, is truth to all. So it's an ironic thing, it's a funny thing, that the same object, the same thing of Haresis is going to be a zecher to what? To the slavery of zecher letit, and at the same time also a zecher to the, uh, the, the fruitfulness of the Jewish people, the development of Kal Yisrael. What do those two things have to do with each other exactly? That's number one. Number two, if we're trying to have something that's a zecher to the development of the Jewish people, the the, 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 the the numbers of the Jewish people increasing and developing to 600,000, why is it Zechel Tapuach? The tree that the Jewish mothers would give birth under. That's how we make the Zechel. When, when the Gemara says the word Zechel Tapuach, no one has any idea what that means until you tell Karashi. So it's not much of a, of a good, you know, Zikar in any way. So of all the things, why is that the way to be mazkir, to remind us of the uh, fruitfulness of the Jewish people. Okay, those are the questions. Okay, so let's investigate a little bit in halacha, this Indian of eating charoises. So in Marmokah number three, there's a Rambam in Hilchus Chamet Simatza, okay? So we're gonna see a little bit uh, what the sheet of the Rambam is in terms of charoises, and then we'll see the Pneumius, where it comes from. So the Rambam says like this, he's describing how you eat mar dipped in charoises. So he says like this, maschul mavarach, you take the mar, and you make a bracha bar priyadama, okay? Vulokeach yarek, and you take tomorrow. Umetavel isa becharoises, you dip it into charoises. Vaychel kezayis, and you eat a kezayis of of um, of the of the vegetable. Vachol mesubini, my everyone that that. No, I'm sorry, this is not talking about mara. I apologize. This is talking about karpas, okay? It's about karpas. The sheet of the Rambam is that we have karpas, we dip it into salt water. The sheet of the Rambam is that you dip it into charoises too. So the Rambam says again. Maslum of Arch Bar Priyadama, you make a bracha of Bar Priyadama on the Kapas, the Lakeach Yarek, you take the vegetable, and the Tabalas of the Haroises, you dip it into Haroises, Vaichel Kazais, you eat a Kazais of it. Again, our custom is Dafka, not a Kazais, but that's the Rambam. Huvachom Subima, he, the Balabas, eats the, the Karpas, everyone eats the Karpas, that's the Rambam. Okay, fine. It's a Chiddish that you dip the Karpas into Haroises, but that's the sheet of the Rambam. But the, the question that the Mafarshim deal with is the order. The Rambam said that you make a bracha of bar priyadama, and then you dip it into charoises, and then you eat it. The question the Farshim ask is like this. We know the halacha is that whenever you make a bracha, you want to be able to eat as soon as possible, as soon as possible. So therefore, if the purpose of, of uh, if you have to eat charoises with the karpas, if you have to have, or, or let's say for us, we dip it in salt water, right? So l'chaira, what would make most sense is, dip it into charoises, according to the Rambam, then make a bracha and eat it right away. Why would the Rambam stipulate and tell Stavka, first make a bracha, and then only then, after the bracha, then dip it into charoises and then eat it? Why create that lack, that, that space of time, of, of, the, of the momentary dipping into charoises? Why would you, Dafka do that after the bracha? Do it before the bracha. That's the question. The truth is, if you take a look at the tour, the tour, when he records the halachas of, let's say, karpas or mara, where you're dipping, the tour says, in fact, like that. First dip the karpas into the salt water or the charoises, according to Rambam, or dip the mar into the charoises, and then you make the bracha and eat it, because why, why would you make the interruption? So that's the question. Why would the Rambam hold like that? That's number one. He holds you make the bracha before. The Rambam says you make the bracha, and then you dip. And then dip. Why would you make, uh, why would you dip? It's, uh, why you might make the hefzik uh, unnecessarily? That's question number one. Question number two, you take a look at Maramukha number four. The Rambam says like this, Bizman Hazeh, it's interesting. In our, in our days, nowadays that She'en Sham carbon, that we don't have a carbon Pesach, so we know that by the times of the Beis Amigdash, when there was a carbon Pesach, 
So as the Pasuk says, Al Matzis Umrayrim Yechlu, you would eat the Karim Pesach together with Matz and Mar. So the Seder was a little bit different than, than how we have it now. Now we have, you know, Kadesh Yochatz Karpetz Yachas, there's Matzah, and then there's Mar and so on. But by the times of the Beis HaMikdash, again, the, the procedure was different. You had one, one of the Simon, and yet they had Karim Pesach with Matz and Mar all together. The Raman says, Bizman Azesh Ancham Karbon. Nowadays, there's no Karim Pesach. So, Acha Shemavarach Hamaitzi Lechem. So, when you make uh, the Bracha Hamaitzi Lechem, Choyzim Mavarach Al Chilas Matzah. You make the second Bracha of Al Chilas Matzah. When Tabal Matzah Becharais says, Vaicha. The sheet of the Ramam is, is that Matzah also gets dipped into Charais. But again, he says the same thing. First, you make the Bracha, then you dip the Matzah into Charais, and then you eat it. The Choyzim Mavarach Al Chilas Mar. Then you make a Bracha on Mar. And you dip the mar into chareses and you eat it. Which means that according to the Rambam, when we say in the in the Manashtana, you know, that tonight Anumat Milam Shtepam, we dip twice, Karpas and Mar, that's not, according to the Rambam, that's uh, only true uh, during the times of the Beis Hamikdash. But nowadays, where we have Karpas, Matzah, and Mar as three different simonim, we in fact dip three times. You dip karpas into charesis according to Ramam. You dip matzah into charesis according to Ram. You dip mar into charesis according to Ram. So, and, the, and again, as you see, just as by karpas, the Ramam said, first make the bracha and then dip. He said the same thing for matzah. First make the bracha and then dip it into the, into the charesis. And remember the same thing, make a bracha on mar and then dip it into charesis. So the first question the first to deal with is, as I mentioned, why would you, Davka, tell us to dip after you make the bracha? Minimize the hefsek. Dip first. Get everything ready. You know, you don't make a bracha and then start preparing in the kitchen. You get it as, as soon as possible to be uh, eaten as soon as possible. So l'chayra, if you're going to dip the karpas and the matz and the mar, dip it first and then make the bracha. That's question number one. Question number two is this idea that the Rambam came up with of dipping the matz into charesis. Like, where is this coming from? This idea that's we're now being reintroduced that there are three dippings uh, Pesach night according to the Rambam. There's karpas, matzah, and mar. So where is this coming from? Okay. So the way the way to deal with this is that really both of these questions answer each other. Let's 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 focus on the fir- the second question first. Where is this idea coming from of dipping three times karpas, matzah, and mar? And davka bezman azeh. Appreciate that, right? Because by the times of the base of Migdash, where matzah and mar were not separated, you're not dipping three times. But this idea that nowadays, because we don't have a Karim Pesach, now there's three opportunities to dip, like Karpas, Matz, and Mar, and we dip three times. Why? So in Marmokka number five, this is from a Sefer Orchus Chaim. One of the So re- he says like this, V'yesh noistim tam acher. There are those that give a reason for this inning of dipping. Now he's not addressing particularly the sheet of the Rambam. He's talking about Bechlal, the inning of dipping, Pesach night. But the Rambam, it's very, very strong. That some people give the following explanation: Al shem hazoyes sheasu achas al mashkoif ushtaim al shtaim mezuzas. The pasuk tells us we know in Parshas Bay that as preparation for Makas Bechayrus to make sure that Jewish homes, the bias of Klal Yisrael, will be protected from Makas Bechayrus. So we know that they brought the Karm Pesach. And the pasuk says to take the blood of the Karm Pesach and to put it on the two doorposts of every Jewish home and on the uh, what's it called on top? The lintel, yeah. Put on the lintel, the mashkaf on top. That's the three things. Now, w- w- when we imagine it just as kids, okay, so you take the thing, you just smear it along the wall, but it's not like that. Chazal understood that this was part of the avoida of bringing the karm pesach. By every carbon, you have to take the blood and pour it on the mizbeach. They didn't have a mizbeach. So the Jewish home was being redefined as the mizbeach. And therefore, just as by carbonus, but many karbanis, you take the blood and you put it on the corners, let's say, of the Mizbech or different parts of the Mizbech, the blood of the Karim Pesach had to be put on the doorpost and the lintel of the Jewish home. Now, the rule is when it comes to karbanis, when you pour blood on the Mizbech and when you're smearing it on the Mizbech, every place that you smear it, you have to dip your finger, let's say, for example, that you're using to put on the Mizbech, you have to re-dip it into the cup. So let's say I'm bringing a karban chatas and the blood has to be has to be uh, smeared on every corner of the Mizbeach. I put, I, first I take my finger, I dip it into the cup, and I smear it on one corner. And then even if I have blood left over on my finger, I have to re-dip it and put it on the other corner. Says the Archa Chaim, well, if the house, if the doorpost and the mashkaf are seen as a Mizbeach, 
that when the Jewish people had to pour the blood and smear the blood around their doorpost in three different locations, two doorposts and the mashkev, that requires three dippings. When they put, when they when they took the uh, grasses and so on that they put on the first mezuzah, they dipped it into the cup of blood, put on that. The next doorpost, they had to dip again, put on the mashkev, dip again. Three dippings. Says the Arches Chaim, the minute that the Rambam is recording of dipping three times, it's not, it's not just because eating charoises. The act of dipping is a zecher to the dipping the Jewish people did when they had to smear the blood on the two mezuzahs and the mashkev of their home. Therefore, that's, what the, 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 therefore, that's why there's a specific Indian, says the Rambam, now that we don't have the Karb Pesach, and we have three different things that you're eating, at three different set, stages. You have karpas, one simon, matzah, another simon, mother, another simon. Well, says the Rambam, well, now we have an opportunity not just to eat charoises, but to make a zecher to the dipping that the Jewish people did when they smeared the blood on their doorposts. Therefore, this is why we're going to have charoises by these three simonim, by karpas, matzah, and mar. First of all, there's an Indian of eating charoises like we saw from the Gemara, but now there's going to be an Indian of dafka dipping, the, the, the object, the karpas, the matzah, and mar, into charoises. So the dipping of, of these three things, of karpas, matzah, and mar, into the charoises is going to be a zecher. So the karp, the, the, karp, the charoises itself is a zecher to tapuach, to the, 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 the fruitfulness of the Jewish people, as we saw, and to the tit, as we saw from the Gemara. But now dipping the, 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 the things into the charoises is also going to be a zecher to the dipping the Jewish people did to smear the blood along their doorposts. Therefore, that's why the Rambam says, again, that's why we have three things that we dip, a zecher to these three dippings. And that's also why the dipping is not a hefzik between the brach and the eating, because the dipping is part of the mitzvah itself. In other words, if the reason why you're dipping it into charoises is because you've got to get charoises on the mar, okay, so, so do that before. That's called preparing the mar. But the answer is, no, no, no. It's not just eating the charoises. It's dipping the thing, the mar, into the charoises, because the, dip, the act of dipping is part of the zecher of what charoises is for. It's to remind us of that experience of dipping in order to smear the doorpost. So that's not one second. That's not a hefzik. That's part of the mitzvah itself. So that's why the Rambam says, Davka, now that we have three opportunities to dip, of karpas, matz, and mar, now the charesis can function not just as a zecher to tapuach and a zecher to, to tit, but the dipping into the charesis is a zecher to that dipping that they did to prepare the doorways with the blood of the Karim Pesach. And then the dipping itself is part of the mitzvah. It's not a hefzik. That's the mitzvah itself. I'm saying that the mitzvah itself is mitzvah zeicher of what you're eating the charoises for or what you're doing with it. The bracha is usually not connected to that. It's nice, but if the etzim it doesn't answer that it's a hefzik, it's a bracha. No, because the, the bracha is a different reason. The bracha is just because you need to eat it. No, that's already. No, then we know that the the, the mitzvahs of, of of the night are bound together with the mitzvah of sifritus and all the zechronis that we're doing. That's that's the the the, 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 the tibble, the act of dipping that you're doing to the karpas, to the matz, to the mar is itself. Part of the Kiyam Mitzvah. So the brachas that you're doing are not so just on the other. That's part of the You're making the bracha, the mitzvah of eating karma. Right, right. That's part of the mitzvah itself. It's part of the mitzvah itself. Okay. Now, let's understand this though, because now we're now being introduced, based on the Rambam, to like this, what seems to be like a third element of, of charesis. Until now, we had, okay, the, the charesis itself is a zecher to, until now, two. Things that seemingly are disconnected from each other. You have zeichel tit and zeichel tapuach, and now we're being introduced. Well, no, you should also know that the charoises, the act of dipping, using the charoises, we also use the charoises as a zecher to preparing the doorposts of the Jewish people, the mashkif, the Jewish people, to uh, protect the Jewish home by makis b'charis. <clears throat> the truth is that this is not; these these things are, are are very much bound to each other, and let's appreciate the fact that that this Indian of Haraisas and its el- and its aspect of being there as a zecher to what happened by the doorpost is is Dafka being brought out when we don't have a carbon Pesach. Right nowadays that there's no carbon Pesach during Gaulus, now we have three things that we're eating separately, karpas, matzah, and mar. So now we have the opportunity to make the zecher to the doorpost of the Jewish people. If you take a look at Marmokka number six to bring this together a little bit, so it's from the Rizal and Shar Kavanas, okay? The, the Arizal tells us, he's talking about the secret, the kavanas of charoises. And the Arizal says like this, Milas charoises. The word charoises, 
who chibur is a combination of two words, rus, sach. Right? Those are the, the, the two uh, words that would be the combination coming together is the word charoises, rus, sach. What's the, what's the significance of that? So the, I'll just share with you the words of the, of the Rizal, then we'll, then we'll try to explain. The Rizal says the secret of charoises is shem sholosh shemus, it's a little bit misprint, shem sholosh shemus, eke havaya eke. The Rizal says that the Indian of Haray says, we know that when it comes to, to Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, there, there were a number of Shemus Akhtayshim that the Rabbanu Shalom revealed that were going to be necessary in terms of the process of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, right? We know that uh, Moshe Rabbeinu says to Rabbanu Shalom, what name are you using? What name, you know, when I tell them that the, the God of their forefathers is going to take them out, what na- what's his name? So Hashem says, Eke Asher Eke. Eke Asher Eke. And then the Pasuk then goes on to say, Koi Amar Havaya, so says Hashem, Ekeshel Chanel. So the Rizal understands that what we're seeing in Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is a combination of these two Shemus Akhtoshim, of Ek Asher Eke, two Ekes, and Koi Amar Havaya, and Yudke Vavke. The Gematria of Eke, Havaya Eke, those three divine names altogether equals numerically 68, okay? And that's the secret of Chorosis. The secret of Chorosis is to infuse in Rus, the 68, the numerical value of Eke Havai Eke. That's the secret of Chorosis. Okay, now let's begin to unravel this. What is the Indian of Rus? Like Rus, let's let you know, <laughs> what is Rus doing Pesach night over here? So Shavuos already, we have Rus, but what's Pesach night? So Maramukha number seven, the Pasuk says regarding uh, Rus, that at the, whole, the end of Megillus Rus, when Rus was eventually, you know, Zechet to marry Bayaz, and Bayaz was Zechet to marry her, and they're building a, a house together. So it says like this, the bracha that the Chachamim, that the Zekanim gave Rus and Bayaz was, Yitin Hashem Se'isha Habal Be'isacha, that Hashem should bless this woman that's coming into your house, Kerachel Ukuleya, Asher Banu Shtehem Es Beis Yisrael. What we're seeing with, with Rus is that there's an Indian Rus is connected with the binion of the bias of Kal Yisrael. That's the bracha that was given to Rus, that she should be like Rachel and Leah. We'll see Rachel and Leah in a moment. That Rus is given a bracha that she should be like Rachel and Leah. That what? In terms of, their, of her ability to build Beis Yisrael, to build the Jewish home. So let's, let's bring this together. Charoises begins with, with, as the Gemara says, one aspect of Charoises is that it's Zechel Tapuach. A zecha, a remembrance of what? Of the fruitfulness, of the, the fact that Jewish people had many, many children. Let's understand. In a deeper context, the children, the, 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 the fruitfulness of the Jewish people in terms of the pruravu is not, should be seen in this terms of charesis as the building of by, base Yisrael. This is the Nekudah Pneumis of what charesis is. The Nekudah Pneumis of what's happened by charesis is that it's connected with this Indian of building base Yisrael. Base Yisrael. That's why Charesis is related to Rus, has the name Rus in it, because Rus was given the bracha and she's connected to what? Asher Banu Shtem as Beis Yisrael. This is why Charesis is related to what? To Zechla Tapuach, for the Jewish people having children and multiplying and so on, which is a development of Beis Yisrael. And this is why Charesis, the dipping three times into Charesis, as, as the Ramam said, is a Zecher to the blood being smeared on the doorposts and the lintel, the Jewish homes, protecting the Jewish homes, more than that, establishing the base Yisrael as a Mizbeah. And so that's the, what's going on over here, is that base Yisrael is being developed by the Chareises. And what's interesting is, is that the original base Yisrael, the house of Yaakov Avinu with Rachel and Leah, how, how, where did that develop? So all, most of the Shvatim, except for Binyamin, the vast majority of the Shvatim were born where? Outside of Eretz Yisrael in Golos. Similarly to what Chareises is. So Chareses is, is, is reminding us that at the same time, the building of Beis Yisrael, Zechel Tapuach, and the dipping of the Chareses, Zechel to the house of the Jewish people being established as Mizbeach and protecting them from Makas Pacharis, and at the same time, it's Zechel Tit. Why? Because when does the binion of Beis Yisrael take place? Davke Indals. And this is why, as I mentioned, the Indian of Chareses being able to be seen as a remez, to the Kedusha of Beis Yisrael in terms of the, of the house being turned into the Mizbeach through the blood of the Mezuzahs and the Mashkev, as the Ramu said, is only possible now that we don't have a current basis. 
when you're in Golis and you don't have the Karm Pesach, and Matzah and Mar are not eaten together, and so now we're divided in separate Simonim, so now you have Karpas, Matzah, and Mar, three different acts of eating. Oh, so now you could have the Karpas, the, the, the Charois is being a Zecher, to the to the tefillah to the dipping of the blood around the mashkaf and the mezuzahs that's and which is a, a zecher to what to the kedusha of Bais Yisrael the binyan of Bais Yisrael and that's only possible dafka what dafka in goes if you have the carbon pesach right then what then matzah is all in together you don't have three things you don't have three acts of dipping and so the whole inyan of charais so no, this, this is what we're seeing over here is that charais is again we have we haven't yet defined what this is but the inyan the secret of charais is, is telling us something about pesach. What it's telling us about Pesach is that Pesach, besides being a time where we left Mitzrayim and Geula and uh, unbelievable miracles, v'chulu v'chulu, leading us to Har Sinai, there's something else going on by Pesach, which is the building of what's called Beis Yisrael. And this is how this is how Golis Mitzrayim begins. Eilu Shmois B'nei Yisrael B'nei Mitzrayim. And when the 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 house of Klai Yisrael, which was being held together by Yosef and the Shvat in that generation. When that generation dies, so Golis begins, right? And then when the Gula begins with Maishar Beinu, so the Pasuk in the beginning of Parshas of the Era has to be Miyachis, has to give us the Yichas of Maishar Beinu to show us where he fits in Beis Yisrael, and that's how the Gula will come. This Indian of Charoises is bringing out this Nakuda, that an aspect of Gulas Mitzrayim is what? Is the establishment of what's called Beis Yisrael. And that's what the Charesis is. And the Beis Yisrael is something that Davka develops and, and Davka sticks out. Davka in Golis. Where did the Jewish people, when did we, when were we given the ability to what? To develop 600,000, to build the, the, the nation of the Jewish people, the collective home of the Jewish people on a national stage. It was in Golis Mitzrayim. So Zeich Davka in Golis, although, again, although the Geula comes when it becomes clear that that the Jewish people are one big happy family. But that big happy family, we might only notice it, you know, uh, when the gula begins to unfold. But when we look back, the happy family has been developed, Davki and Gullahs, right? Because before Gullahs, the Jewish people were not multiplying like crazy. It wasn't happening like that. So the Jewish people multiply like uh, <coughs> Mamish, a miraculous way, Davka in the Oymek, in the depth of Gullahs. And the gula is what? Is our realizing, wow, we have a bias now. We have a bias. We have a base Israel now. This isn't just individual people. This mamisha a collective uh, nation. It's a collective house of the Jewish people. So again, we're, we're going to explain what this means in a moment. But this is the nakud of what's going on over here. The Pesach is a yantif, which is a time that base Israel was solidified and sanctified, and that's what Chareisis is about. You follow this? So that's what Chareisis is. Chareisis is again zechel tapuach, which is the development of base Israel. It is a zecher to the house of the Jewish people being sanctified as like a mizbeach and being protected by Marcus Becheris, that's Beis Yisrael. And all of this takes place when, Davka takes place, zecher letit, Davka in Golis, that's when Beis Yisrael develops. And that's when Davka in Golis, we don't have the current Pesach, that's when we now have the opportunity of making a clear zikaron for the hazoyas, for the dipping that took place to establish Beis Yisrael as a Malkim Kaddish. That's what's going on. Is the Arizal, just to check on the Arizal, is, yeah. he, is he including the Peshat of the Rambam, or is that your... No, he's, he doesn't reference the Rambam. Like that's Rambam. where it's coming from, yeah. yeah. And, and why, why of all people is it Rus? Okay, so we'll see. So the truth is, I mean, uh, Rus Gary, obviously Gary, is famous. Gary Eason, but yeah, no, but obviously, when we think of Rus, our immediate thing is we go to Malchus based David, which is also we call Malchus based David. Now, by the way, if you think about it, this is a major theme of the, the building of base Yisrael is something that's very much connected. Once you notice it, it's, 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 once you think about it, it's very much there. The Pasuk Marshall says that, uh, you know, uh, Shifra and Pua, right? Uh, Miriam and Yecheved. So Shifra and Pua, the Pasuk says that they were told to uh, kill the boys and so on. But Tireni Amiyadis Esrolikim, they feared the Rabbanu Shalom, they didn't listen to Par, the Yaslehem Batim. And the Rabbanu Shalom pays them back, rewards them with homes, with Batim, with base Yisrael. As Rashi says, base Kuna and base Malchus come from them. And so this Indian of the Miyaldas being being a, a major component in terms of of it, it's one of the only things that we that the Pasik goes out of its way to talk about in terms of Gauls Mitzrayim. We, the, it talks about it on a very broad scale, the difficulties and the slavery and so on. But of all the particular stories, 
the stories about Moshe Rabbeinu, we understand he's the major player in terms of the Gula. But this is a little bit of a side story over here, that the Mialdis did not kill the baby boys and so on. And so, obviously, it's related to, to the general story. But th- th- this sticks out in terms of the Yaslam Batum. That's a major component. That's what Gullah is trying this. It could be the Chazal say she was called Moshe also in this area, which is Gora Kajbo, which is Tishpochis, since that's the whole Indian of the Shin the Tishpochis. So, Rus is the. What is the Indian of Shin the Tishpochis? Maybe because that's what we're doing on Pesach Taylor, because we're busy thanking yeah. Hashem because he took us out. Right, right. Okay, that's more, yeah, by Chris Yamsel, yeah. Okay, so we'll see, maybe we'll, we'll see if that connects. Okay, so let, let, but now let's understand, what, what does this mean, Beis Yisrael? That's the question, what does it mean, Beis Yisrael? Now, to unravel that, we have to focus in more on Rus. Because Rus, as Charesis indicates, the word Rus is not just on a lady, as, as the Pasuk says in, in the end of Megillus Rus, in Marmokka number 7, Yitin Hashem is Yisha Habal Beisacha, that this woman that you gave a bracha to Baya, that this woman that's coming into your home, Kerachel Ukaleya Asher Banu Shtem is Beis Yisrael. What's clear from the Pasuk is that this Indian of Beis Yisrael, the development of Beis Yisrael, which is Rus's Indian, and that's what Charesis is about, the, the way Beis Yisrael is developed is Dafka when there's a Yichud, when there's a union between Rachel and Leia. Asher Banu Shtem is Beis Yisrael. Only Beis Yisrael can be developed when it's through both Rachel and Leia. And by the way, this is a major also component in the Kavanas of Seder night. I'm not going to go through exactly where and how. But part of the Kavanas of Seder night is to unite Rachel and Leah. Certain, certain Shemus Hagdashim which are more related to Leah, certain Shemus Hagdashim which are more related to Rachel, part of the Seder night is to integrate them and not to separate Rachel and Leah. Because that's a major aspect of Pesach night, which is about developing what's called Beis Yisrael, which is only possible when there's a Yichud of Rachel and Leah. Rachel and Leah both have to be united, in order for Beis Yisrael to be developed. And this is the secret of Chorosis. So the secret of Chorosis is what? Is the building of Beis Yisrael. This is not, and, and, and Rus, let's go back, this is why Rus is being hinted to in Chorosis. Not just because it happens to be, there's a Pasuk regarding Rus, which talks about building Beis Yisrael. Rus, the Neshama of Rus is the Neshama that unites Roch and Leia. That's why Rus was given the bracha of what? Of building Beis Yisrael. Therefore, she is the forebear of Malchus based David, the kingdom of the Jewish people that unites all of the Jewish people under one Malchus. David and Melch's job is not just to be a king over Yehuda or over uh, Yosef. David and Melch's job is to be the king over all of Klai Yisrael, both Rachel and Leah. And Rus, who is the, four, the great, great-grandmother of David and Melch, her inyan is what? Is to, is to allow the Jewish people to have a full development bias. And Beis Yisrael means Rachel and Leah together. So therefore, to really unravel this and to understand what Beis Yisrael is and why is this so important when it comes to Pesach, so we have to, we have to then investigate what does Rachel and Leah mean and what does it mean to bring them together. Okay, so there's many different ways we could go about this, but tonight we'll go in this particular way. In the Sermon Akhtashim, we find that Rachel and Leah, the Zara Kaddish uses these terms, I'm sure you're all familiar with this as well, Leah is called... Leah, Karis, Leah was not just a person. She's a bechin. There's a, Leah is a, is, a, is a reality in the world, in every Jew. Leah Imenu is called Alma Diskasi, the hidden world. And Rachel Imenu is called Alma Disgalia, the revealed world. There's many Ramaz this, many uh, hints to this, you know. Uh, Leah Imenu, Yaakov Vinu, did not see right away her inner beauty. She's the hidden world. Rachel Imenu was more obvious. Her beauty was more on the outside. She's the revealed world. Alma Diskasia. Versus Alma Dizgalia. Now these two realities, these two aspects of creation, what's called the hidden world and the revealed world, in our context for tonight, there are two worlds that we also that are more familiar to us, the terminology, but it's also related to this. Oilam Haba and Oilam Hazet. Right? Oilam Haba, that's called the hidden world. That's called Alma Diskas. What's Oilam Haba? Okay, after a person passes away, it's Oilam Haba, after Mashiach, after Mason, whatever. It's, it's not so much the point of when the official time of Oilam Haba begins. But Oilam Haba is, whenever you, whenever you want to say Oilam Haba begins, it's definitely not now. It's either after a person passes away, after Mashiach, Chiesa whatever it is. It's Oilam Haba, it's the world to come. The world that we don't see, the world that, uh, that is yet to come. And then you have Oilam Haza. Oilam Haza means the world that you can see. Zeh always is a word that you use when you could point to something with your finger and say, Zeh, thus is this. Oilam Haza will be Rachel. 
and Olam Haba would be Leia, right? Leia is the hidden world, that's Olam Haba. Rachel is the revealed world, the beautiful one, that's Olam Hazah. So we have these two worlds, you have Olam Haba, you have Olam Hazah, and as we know, the Rabbanu Shalom put us in Olam Hazah, and very often we get caught up in Olam Hazah. But on the other hand, we also know that our Ikra Avayit is what? Is to do things in Olam Hazah in order to be Zarechet Olam Haba. This, that way of thinking, though, is separating between Rachel and Leia. So you have Rachel and Leia, you have Olam Haz and Olam Haba. And the void of Pesach night, through, as it's revealed in the secret of Charesis, is what? It is to be makash ourselves to the Kedusha of Rus, which means to unite Rachel and Leia. And when Rachel and Leia united, that's what it means to build Beis Yisrael. And that's what Yitzhiz Mitzrayim was really about, is about the building of Beis Yisrael. Now that you have Beis Yisrael, you could have a Har Sinai, you could have a Mishkan, but Beis Yisrael needs to be developed. And to build Beis Yisrael, you need the secret of Rus, you need to unite Rachel and Leia together. So what does it mean to unite Oil and Haba and Oil and Haza? Like, what does that mean? And, and appreciate this, and again realize, and this is Dafke capable of happening, possible to happen, Dafke in Golas. Primarily in Golas. Again, remember, just as the base Yisrael, just as the Jewish people were developed and that's what Zechir Tapuch is about. And that's what the dipping of the Chorosis is about. But it all happened Davka, during the Golis Mitzrayim. That's when you had the development of Beis Yisrael on a national level. And that's why Chorosis is also Zechir Latet. And so, so too, with our, with, in our context, the ability to unite Roch and Leia, which is what Chorosis is about, which is what, the, what Pesach is really a celebration of, that development, that ability to unite Roch and Leia is Davka happening in Golis. And the Geula is our realizing, well, look at what we just did, you know? So what does that mean exactly? Okay, so take a look at Marmok number 8. There's a tar from Rav Tzaddik in Sefer Rassisi Laila, page 11. It's Moshe uh, Geval the So he says like this, you know, there's a famous Gemara. The Gemara says that that tefillah, davening, is a davr ha'ayme bruma shalaylam, something that stands in the highest place in the world. People don't take davening as seriously as they should. Something that stands in the pinnacle of the universe. So it says like this. And let's understand, tefillah, as Eric Kagan pointed out, Rus is the, is, the, is the uniting force behind Rachel and Leia. Rus is the great-grandmother of David and Melech. David and Melech is known for davening. So again, all these puzzle pieces putting put together over here, the building of Beis Yisrael, which is what Chorosis is, which comes through the Kayach of uniting Rachel and Leia, is somehow going to be seen, Davka, through the power of Tefillah, which is in Yom Davon Melech. So this is, this is going to be, the Davon Melech is able to unite Rachel and Leia as the great grandson of Rus. Somehow, this ability to unite Rachel and Leia to build Beis Yisrael, which Davka is something that is 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 capable of happening primarily dafka in Golis and through the slavery of Mitzrayim. That's dafka something that's be connected to tefillah. So it something says like this: the chayshin. Why is that people? What does it mean exactly that people are mezalzel in tefillah? We don't take davening seriously. The chayshin. Why? Because people think that kol iker tefillah. That what's tefillah about? I knew rak sheil strachav oil mahaza. It means davening for things that you need of this world. Oil mahaza dikinyan. That's what it means. Because that, 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 you go through the Nusach of davening. Most of the things that we're davening for are things that you need in this world. Some things are very, very important, and some things are maybe less important, but uh, whatever you need, that's what you're davening for. What, the nus- what davening is, is about are not things that are on the pinnacle of the universe. Primarily what davening is about are things of this world. But says that's the mistake that Gemara is pointing out. The mistake that people make is what? Is to think that what you're davening for is just simply oilam haza and yonim, small things. Avul bemis, but the truth is, kol in yoni oilam haza, hey ma'ashem But the truth is, everything of this world and everything you need in this world, whether maybe it's talking mishagas that you need it. The guy, the guy is, he's davening, you know, kids daven for silly things sometimes, right? The kid's gonna daven that uh, they should have a toy, or the older kid is davening they should do well on a test, whatever it is. And as an adult, we're thinking that's very cute. Right? And we're thinking, hey, he's just a you know, he's just a kid. So he's diving for, 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 for small things. And I'm sure Hashem is like laughing and smiling and, and winking all that. And Hashem's reaction is also it's very cute. That's a mistake. It's not cute. The Rabbana Shalom is taking those tools very seriously. Why? Because if that's if if it exists, 
if it's a tzarech that you have, then that's the most important thing the Rav Hashem is worth. Everything comes from, from Hashem. To belittle something that you need in this world is almost a little bit kfira. Because what you're saying is, is that, okay, God, he, of course, God, whatever God, God uh, uh, is willing to get himself involved in, is chashev. God's chashev. He's only going to be metabol. He's only going to uh, invest, you know, energy, so to speak, in things that are chashev. By me saying that this thing is not chashev, that's basically saying God's not involved in it. Everything that you daven for, you're automatically acknowledging its importance. And when you say, and when I say its importance, I don't mean its importance to you. It's importance to the universe, to the Rabbanu Shalom himself. Otherwise, what does it mean you're davening for? If you're davening, it means that you're acknowledging the Rabbanu Shalom should invest his time, Kiviyachal, and his energy into this Zach. And that means that you're accepting and you're acknowledging it's, it's, it's important. In other words, what you're saying is, is that there is no difference between Olam Haza and Olam Haba. Everything that you see in Olam Haza is Ruchniyaz. Everything you see in Olam Haza is significant, has roots in, this, in the higher world. Whenever you're diving for something, it's not a claim as There is nothing small. If you saw something that, if, I, you, know, if you were to be shown that, uh, that this uh, piece of gum, right? I don't have a piece of gum, as you can imagine. <laughs> a piece of gum. That the, the, this piece of gum exists and it has a root in Atsilus. In the, uni- in the highest universe of spiritual reality, the Atsilus. And the Shemus Hashem that are the divine root of this piece of gum. Then all of a sudden, this piece of gum is a chashu zach. Ad kedekach, that the older, the earlier generations of humanity would serve the piece of gum as a vedazar. So we think of that as narishka. What type of baloney is that? You bow down to a tree, the tree is the creator of the universe. What does that mean? Like, the is ridiculous. Why wouldn't the, why wouldn't the world would a person ever bow down to a, to a chair that you made? How could you think that a chair is the bari oil? The answer is they weren't, they weren't fools. They weren't fools. The answer is they understood that everything that exists in this world has roots in the higher world. And so when they were serving wood and they're serving stone, they're not serving the wood and stone as wood and stone down here. They're trying to be makash themselves, to connect themselves to the spiritual energy that's being invested in the wood and stone. Now that's called the Vedazar because as Yidin, the one that we have to serve in order to connect to that energy is the source of all that Kaychas, which is the Rabbani Shalom himself. Not to fall, not to make the mistake of of uh, connecting ourselves to the you know somewhere in the middle you know the the, the middleman down the road you know in the middle of that chain we connect all the way to the root of all roots we speak to the Rebbeinu himself but everything of this world has its roots in the higher world which means it's not a dover cut it's not a small zat so in other words it says Rebbeinu Shalom tefillah itself is 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 the greatest expression of what. There is no difference between Olam Haz and Olam Haba. Listen, listen to how Ritzalik says it. He says, Avod the is the second line. The Emes, Kol Inyane Olam Haz, everything of this world, Hey, Hashem is Baruch. It's coming from Hashem. Vailam Haz, Vailam Haba, Ein, Beis, and Yonim Nefrod. And this world and the next world are not two separate entities. The Shneim Nikra Olam. You think about it. They're both called the Olam Haz, this world, Olam Haba, the next world. It says Ritzalik, Shem Olam, when you say the word Olam, the word Olam is all-inclusive. Olam means everything. Olam means the entire creation. So how could there be Olam Haza and another Olam Haba? The word Olam means everything. The answer is Olam Haza and Olam Haba don't mean two separate universes. All there is is one creation. All there is is one universe. But that one universe is experienced in two separate, two separate ways. You could experience the universe as Zeh, or you could experience the universe as Olam Haba. But in truth, that's only your perspective. It's because we're, we're, we have a psychosis. We're mentally unhealthy. And we experience things just as Dvarm Gashmi. But that, that's our problem. It's not the truth. And whenever you daven, davening is, being, is, is, is trying to cure you from that mental illness. Of being able to remember the fact that everything of this world is something bigger than what your eyes see. This is where it is. This is what it means, base Yisrael, the house of the Jewish people. What's a house? A house is where everything is, it goes to ultimately reside. When you're traveling, it means you're not home. When you're home, it means that's where you're supposed to be. Building base Yisrael means establishing this world, defining the, the, the place of menucha, the place where everything has its final destination. 
And where is that? Not some other universe of Eilam Haba. And it's not just purely the Gashmis of Eilam Haza. It's the same thing. The development of Beis Yisrael is itself the union of Rachel and Leib. To, to, when you have a, a, everything of this world, as, as to the extent that we could see it and define it as what? As just a reflection of its spiritual root then that's what's establishing it as existing. That's what establishes it as its place of resting. You're giving it a bias, understand? Giving a bias. Because as soon as you, as you look at things simply as in a physical sense, that it's just a piece of gum, then it doesn't have a bias. Because then already you're saying that it's just transient. You're saying that it's on the road towards its ikker place of menucha, which is Olam Haba. And when is that going to be? Who knows? The journey is going to take who knows how long to get to that 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 uh, place that doesn't exist as its own entity. The, 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 to, to give something a bias, to give something a, re- a place of resting and say, oh, it's at home, that comes with recognizing that this is, that Olam Haba and Olam Haba is the same thing. By, by defining Olam Haza and Olam Haba as the same thing, then th- that itself is building a bias for reality then finally reality is able to reside and say, oh, finally, I exist. I can be here. Instead of constantly thinking that, no, I don't, I'm not really supposed to be here. I'm waiting for this future that, I've, that I don't see, that I'll never see. And you can keep on waiting forever and ever till this universe of Olam Haba. It's, it's right now. That's what Olam Haza is. Olam Haba and Olam Haza are the same thing. And as soon as we can begin to realize that, that everything of this world has a spiritual root, and that's what's enlivening it right now, then you're not chasing ghosts. Then, then you actually are giving something its existence. This is the greatness of the Jewish people. This is the celebration of Pesach. The celebration of Pesach is the realization. It, it's it, in order to let's put it this way: in order to receive the Torah on Harsina, what's the Torah about? The Torah is about giving you mitzvahs, meisis, about giving you physical mitzvahs to do. If the purpose of 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 life is to connect, is to escape Olam Hazeh. And to find and to get into this other alternate universe, this this unknown, mysterious, ethereal, untouchable uh, that no one's ever seen, called Eilam Haba, then you know what? Then I don't understand how physical tefillin get you there, and how in the world can physical Shabbos candles get you to a place that's intangible? The answer is you, that's not what Torah mitzvahs are about. Torah mitzvahs are not about ways of leaving Eilam Haza and finding this mysterious, ethereal reality that's called Olam Haba. If, if, if it's not Olam, it doesn't, Olam Haba, disconnected from it doesn't exist. The Rebbe created one universe, and one universe alone, and that's the universe we live in. But this universe is not superficial as our eyes see it. Olam Hazeh is a description of the only universe that exists as you see it with superficial eyes. Olam Haba is the only universe that exists when you see it with more spiritual eyes. But, it, but all there is is this universe. And therefore, when the, the British one gave us Mitzvah's Mises, Mrs. Mises are the tools that exist within this universe to allow us, uh, allow us access to the deeper elements of this universe and to allow ourselves to experience reality as it truly is. And the Hachana to this, to prepare the Jewish people, what? To stand by Arsina and to receive those instruments and those Mrs. Maisius, what happened by Pesach is the development of Beis Yisrael, the unification of Rochel and Leah, the Jewish soul being reoriented in such a way where it's able to see this world as the bias, as the place of Menucha. How could this world be the place of Menucha if everything, if this world is, is, is simply a, a doorway, a, 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 a prosdor, a hallway to get to some other place? then this world is not a bias. Then the Jewish people can't be called a nation that, that's called Beis Yisrael. To say that we are Beis Yisrael right now means that this place is the, is the base of Menuchah. This is the place of, of restfulness. This is where it all is. What does that mean? So it means uh, it's just table and chairs. It's just, no, that it's about seeing this reality as it truly is, which is an Olam Habadik reality right now. That's what's called uniting Rachel and Leah. That's the Avayda Pesach night. And this specifically takes place through tefillah. Because since davening requires a person 
to speak the Rabban Shalom, you're speaking to the Infinite One Himself about everything that you need of this world, that means that you're already reorienting yourself, whether you, you know, you're cognizant of it or not, you're defining, you're, you're establishing that what you're speaking about, which are mamish klein is small things, but you're speaking to the Rabban Shalom about these small things, which means they're not small anymore. So it says we're talking like this. What's the difference between Olam Haz and Olam Abba? Zeh Nikra Hazeh. Olam Haz is called Olam Hazeh. Perish Hanigolai. And that's called the, the same universe looking at it superficially. We call that Olam Hazeh. The Zeh Nikra Haba. But the same universe seeing it from more opinionistic perspective for what it truly is, that's called Olam Haba. Perish Hanela. Bevade called Tzarcha Olam Hazeh. Therefore, everything that a person needs of this world, Mashabar Shemisparach, things that obviously the Rabban Shalom created and you're asking him to create for you, Shiyun Tzarcha Adam that are needed for the person, Heim Be'emes Oymdim Berumishal Olam. They don't exist on the bottom of the world. They exist on the, the, the pinnacle of the Olam. V'hainu Ayedei Tfila, and that's what comes through Tfila. Shu Makir Shekot Tzarcha Adam Hashemisparach. When we recognize that everything we need is from the Rabban Shalom. The Hashem is brought light and light, and the Rebbeinu Shlom doesn't give it to me. Ain like plum, then I don't have it. So that means that the bubble gum that I'm davening for is mamish, uh, a real mitzias, and it has a place of menucha. It has a bias to reside in. It's not just a transient piece of matter that it's on its way to nothingness. It exists. It's real. It's real. That's what Yitzis from Shem is about. It's about giving birth. It's about development, developing base Yisrael, which is mitzias, real reality, real reality. This is why Chazal say, you know, there's machlokas in the Gemara whether the world was created in Nisan or Tishra, right? So you know, El Veil Der Chaim on some level, Tosfos talks about it. On some level, the world was created both in Nisan and Tishra. So listen, I understand Tishra. We everything we're doing around Tishra is oriented towards. The fact that the world was created, so it's Rosh Hashanah, the Din, and Yom Kippur, and so on. It's, it's all oriented towards that Indian of Bria Salaam. So what are we doing, Nisan, to correlate this idea of the world being created? The answer is, this is what it means, the world was created. The creation of the world in Tishrei still allows room for, their, for this mistake of there being a divide between Olam Haz and Olam Haz. But the creation that takes place in Nisan is a creation that solidifies that everything is the same dimension. It's, it's all the same oilam. It's just different ways of seeing it, different ways of relating to it. Do you relate to it superficially? That's called oilam hazeh. Do you relate to the piece of gum in a deeper perspective? That's called oilam haba. And so the whole in the Pesach night, which is the redemption of the Jewish people, leaving Mitzrayim and establishing, as we as we have been saying, emerging out of Mitzrayim as a fully developed base Yisrael, that itself is what it means to, to establish the Rabbani Shalom as the creator. The creator of what? The creator of, an, of, of a reality that exists. As opposed to thinking that there's Olam Hazeh and Olam Haba separately. When you think of Olam Hazeh and Olam Haba separately, then nothing really exists. Olam Hazeh is on its way out. And Olam Haba is this universe that no one's ever seen and no one knows about. So, that, so, so what is there already? It's nothing. But now that you have Nisan, which says, no, 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 it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. Rachel and are united. It's one Indian. So now you have a real Metzius. Now you have a real Metzius. And this is what, again, this is, this is the secret of Chorosis. This is why the divine names that are used to enliven Rus, to give Chiyas into Rus, are the names Eke, Havaya, Eke. By the way, the gematria of the name of those three names, Eke, Havaya, Eke, 68, which is the gematria, that's the Sach Rus, that's the Chorosis. So the gematria of 68 is also is also the word Chaim, right? Chaim is also 68. So Chaim, those divine names are, are involved in this secret of giving reality actual life, that it really exists. Why? Eke means I will be. That's Olam Haba. Havaya means the one that is. That's Olam Hazah. Eke, Havaya, Eke, the full integration of those divine names of Eke and Havaya means that what is going to be already exists. Instead of Olam Haba being a place that, that is yet to come, it's right now. It's just a matter of, of perspective. This is what it means that Yitzhiya Mitzrayim is taking place with these divine names. Because the secret of Yitzhiya Mitzrayim is what? Is the building of Beis Yisrael. And this Davka comes out during Gauls. Take a look at the end of, of Rav Tzavik, just to finish off this piece. So he says like this. Uh, second to last line. Hagolius v'hayisurin hurak alzeh. And this is the Iker purpose of Gauls. What's the Iker purpose of Gauls? What, what happens during Golis? What happens during Golis is, everything we need is taken from us. 
mm-hmm. and we have no choice but to ask Hashem for everything. Why would the Rabbi Hashem do that? Because the, the, the Igor, because that's exactly what the Rabbi Hashem wants of us during Gauls, is to daven for everything. But we have no choice but to daven for everything. You have to daven for your life, you have to daven for your parnasa. If Mashiach, when Mashiach comes by Hashem, you have to daven for parnasa. It's forever. Just like by Shlomo Melch's time, everyone had, everyone was super wealthy. You know? But Davka now, that it's not like that, you have to daven for that stuff. You have to daven for Afuas, you have to daven for Shadokha, you have to daven for children, you have to daven for, for, for your kidneys. Why? So we always think of that, that's a terrible, that's a terrible side effect of Gauls, because everything is broken in a million pieces, so we have to ask Hashem for everything. That's the biggest blessing of Gauls, because by forcing us to daven for every single nakud of our lives, as if our lives depend on it, which it does, then that's establishing that every single piece of our lives is mamish a beginning. That's what's giving our lives actual depth and actual metzias. The geula, the redemption, which is the gulas mitzrayim, which is the revelation that, that the Jewish people exist, and this world is a bias, this world actually exists, was something that was being cultivated and developed in Golas, where we had to daven for every single piece of existence. It's davka zechletit. Again, understand, it's davka, the charesis itself, which is a simon of what? Of, of a zecher to the kedushas habayas, the reality of the Jewish people and the world around us as being an actual place of existence where things are real, where it's not just waiting for some, uh, you know, never, you know, for this carrot that's never going to come, this new universe of, it, it's giving its existence. That's also zecher latit. It happened and it develops, dafk in goes when you're forced to daven for every nook and cranny, for every little crumb. And then every little crumb is being redefined as a big experience. That's what's going on. <clears throat> this is, by the way, this is again going back. The, the name Ek, Havai Ek, is that ending of what will be is already now. Mm-hmm. This is also why we mentioned in the beginning, why is it that Chareises is going to be Zecher Tapuach? Why Dafka, in order to remind us of this ending of the Jewish people developing this bias, this base Yisrael, it's Dafka with the Tapuach, with the apple, the citrus, whatever it is. It says the Gemara in Shabbos, take a look at Marmokah number 9. The Gemara says in Shabbos, Pei Chesmet Aleph, Om Reb Chama Bar Chanina. Reb Chama Bar Chanina said, Ma'i dich siv, what does it mean when the Pasuk says in Shir Shir Ki Tapuach Ba'atzei Hayar, that the Jewish people are compared to the Tapuach. Lo menim shli so Tapuach. In what way are we compared to the Tapuach? Lerm lecha. Ma Tapuach zeh piriya kaidim la'olav, says the Gemara, because all fruits, what usually happens is, is that first there's, there's a, a blossom, first there's the flower, the flower comes, the blossom comes, it falls off, and then the fruit develops, but not the tapuach. And this is, by the way, uh, you know, that's why it's probably not the apple, because the tapuach, you know, this is more of, a, more of an esrog or, cit- or a citrus. That what happens by the tapuach is that what? Is that the fruit actually begins to develop before the blossom is fully developed as well. So what usually comes later comes actually earlier by the tapuach. Af Yisrael hekdimu nasa so to the Jewish people said, Nasa before Nishma, even though the normal thing is what? Nishma, I'll hear, and then I'll do. No, we're going to do before we even hear. How's that possible? The secret of the Tapuch is what? Is Havaya Eke. Is that what will be is already now. And that's what's allowing us to stand by our Sina, to say Nasa of Nishma, is the experience of Yitzhi Mitzrayim, which is a what? That there's no difference between Rachel and Leia. That what's going to be, which is Olam Haba, is already now. So Davka, the, 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 the way to remind ourselves of what? Of Binyan Beis Yisroel. The Kedush is a bias, which is Charei says, is Davka Zechel Tapuach. It takes us to the Tapuach tree, because the Tapuach tree also connects us to this idea of Nasa Vinishma, of what's going to be in the future, has already started from the beginning. It already is in the beginning. The future is already now. There's no chil between now and then. It's all just now. It's all the same oil. It's, it, you call it Olam Aza, call it Olam Abba, but it's right now. Everything, everything that we experience is real. That's the Chiddush of, of Harsinai. That's the Chiddush of, of, of Nisan. This is why, if you think about it, the, 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 the feeling of Tishrei is a very different feel than Nisan. The feel of Tishrei is much more trying to leave Olam Hazza. It's much more, we call it spiritual. It's much more trying to grasp the ungraspable. That's the feeling of Tishrei. Whereas Nisan is mamish like, mamish real. It's like, it's, it's cleaner, it's a... Uh, Windex, you know, it's it's uh, frogs, and it's like it, it's mamish, it's mamish real. It's mamish real. It's a very funny thing, and they're both celebrating Brias Island. But the answer is, 
Again, Tishrei still leaves that sense of Alam Haza as one place, Alam Haba is something else. And because of that, the natural instinct is to try to grab to Alam Haba, which is almost impossible. But Nisan is not like that. Nisan is what? Nisan is Beis Yisrael. And Beis Yisrael means that, that the world finally can rest at ease. This is also why Pesach is connected to Shabbos. Pesach is called Mimachras HaShabbos, the day after Shabbos. It says to start counting Sphira after Shabbos. It's referring to Pesach. What does Pesach have to do with Shabbos? Shabbos is a time of Menucha. And Pesach is the Menucha of the entire universe in a certain sense. It, the universe can finally re- rest assured that it exists without thinking of itself as just a Hechatimsa to get to another dimension called Adam Abba. No, this is it. You're good. Sit where you are. Stay where you are. Redefine yourself. Realign yourself with your inner core. Become more pneumistic. Understand the Olam Haba of right now. But you, but you have everything you need. That's the secret. That's the secret of, of Nisan. So it, 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 things become more Mesyashev El Alev. You can have more Yishev Hadas. The, 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 we'll talk about this more on Shabbos, but the, even the, the, the Bulbulim and the Katnas and the Balagan that comes, that comes along with preparing for Pesach very often that frustrates us because we're hoping for this more spiritual experience of a, of a Tishrei. And while you're on the floor cleaning for Pesach or you're shopping or you're spending who knows how much money, you know, on, on, on Pesach, you're thinking to yourself, I just want to have a Ni'ilah. Like, Ni'ilah would be nice right now. You know, instead of that, I'm like, I'm laughing, making myself crazy. No, no, no. That's, that, that's exactly what Kedushas Nisan is. Kedushas Nisan, Kedushas Pesach is... Where you are is exactly where you're supposed to be. That is reality. That's real. Nila is not so real from the perspective of Nisan. In Tishrei, it's real. When we get to Tishrei, we'll talk about Nila, and it'll feel very real. But by Nisan, what's real is, 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 is laundry after laundry after laundry. What's real in Nisan is, you know, spending more and more money every year in matzah. You know, that, 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 that's real. That's real. That's real. And so that's the avoid of what Nisan is. And, the, and again, th- and this is what comes out with Haraisas, is that the, this, this Nakuda of Rus through Tfila. That's why, again, I, you know, next week maybe we'll talk about this more in practical terms, but when it comes to Seder night, just, just embrace it. It's not the Vertlach, this, understanding. Just embrace the moment. That, that, that's the Ikra of it. Just embrace it. Allow... Allow the Seder to do its thing. Allow Pesach to do its thing. Just don't get in the way. You know I mean, allow it to happen because it's real. And to experience something real, you have to allow it to breathe. Allow it to breathe. Don't be constantly thinking about the Olam Haba. All it is is right now. And that's how I live Pesach. No. Shem Shavuz is to connect ourselves to the Aris of Pesach, the Gula of Pesach. And just as the Beis Yisrael was developed in Gels in such a way, and we came out in Amish without, with realizing what we've accomplished, Bez Hashem, we should experience the same thing. Can we taste my son? We're in the place. We just got Sadiq and Harry.